Okay, a lot of questions with this image, and I promise you there are no answers, and I'm not going to answer them if you try in the comments. But I will tell you is that we're on vacation this week, so reruns. That's the cheapest, most effective way to be doing this. Um, next week we're at the LA Auto Show, so stick around for that. Derek is, uh, is going to be running around in his shorts or, I don't know, some kind of wig. Um, until then, winter's coming for the Northern Hemisphere, so uh, a classic rerun from the Road Testament, um, How to Drive in the Snow. Enjoy it. Oh, I got it dirty. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to do that. You can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. You c you're incapable of throwing leaves that, that, that look good. Sorry. Let me get that. An emotional day for students at a local school district after a deadly crash on a Kansas highway. 16-year-old Anastasia Bader was less than three miles from school when she tried to avoid a couple of deer and veered off the road. The accident would take yet another horrifying twist as a third vehicle came over the hill and before it could stop, smashed into all three girls. And that brings us to New Hampshire where we're currently freezing at the Team O'Neill Rally School. Now this is the place where Travis Pastrana, Ken Block and many other famous drivers in the United States learned how to drive on all types of surfaces. We're here with the North Atlantic Audi Club with their winter driving school. And oh look, how expected, an Audi. The new S4, V6 supercharged, we have reviewed this before, but not in red. We're here to learn the fundamentals of driving in the snow. Now the U.S. has a lot of problems. The one of most concern to me is the fact that we've got no clear, proper education for driving in any other condition but sunny weather. It boggles my mind that after 20 hours, a kid at 16 years old can get a license that could literally kill himself or other people on the road. It's sad to think that most of the world, especially Europe, the Germans, they look at us as terrible drivers. First and foremost, start slow. We're, we're, we're basically trying to build skills up and everyone has a different skill set. Uh, depending on where you, you come from, the, the instructor will try and assess what, what kind of car you have, mm -hmm. what kind of tires you have, what is your general comfort playing in the snow. Mm -hmm. Everyone has different skill levels. We've had 15 year olds here and we've also had 75 year old women here. So what we're trying to do is, is basically assess your skill level and bring your comfort level up as you learn the vehicle dynamics and how the car is going to react to your steering inputs, your throttle inputs and your braking. I know that a lot of the instructors are pretty passionate about that this should be almost mandatory training for anyone that lives in the in the, the northeast area. Mm -hmm. So you know how to react to this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we were talking earlier where we've had friends that were killed due to inexperience, you know, teenagers yep. that didn't know how to react to certain areas. It's not necessarily people that are messing around or uh, or drinking and driving. It's, it's they just don't know how to drive, mm -hmm. and it's one of the failures of a lot of the automotive, mm -hmm. the education system that our teenagers go through. Second gear, they insert in. You know, I do with this all in first gear in the okay. off-road. Uh, it's going to give you more throttle control. Yeah, I think that's probably best. Just feel it out. Keep your hands nice and loose. Yep. When that's people good. start to white knuckle is when they start to get lost in their hands. Mm -hmm. What's the most basic reason we do this? Especially here in the United States. They just keep making the driving laws more strict for kids instead of training them. In Europe, it's my understanding that you can get your license but it also doesn't mean that you're necessarily qualified to drive in the snow and, and within some period of time you are supposed to be required to go to some sort of winter or skid school as, as you might call them and they're safer drivers than we are yeah you just don't want to panic and lift off the gas because you're going to lose control when you do that and that's what a, uh, what happens to a lot of people is they just react too aggressively and make the absolute opposite wrong move kids that come here from driver's ed 15 16 years old Anything you have to unteach? Uh, the boys are infamous for having a little too much uh, computer game experience. Yeah. You know, they're playing Turismo. Forza Gran Turismo, um, and they think they can get it. The physics are pretty good, even even on the video game type ones. But you know, damn, it just turned off. You yeah. know, and there's no consequence. You can't yeah. wreck dad's car or whatever. You look at what we're doing today. Do you think there's enough driver education out there? Do you think there needs to be No, I actually I think there's a big failure. There's a big gap. We're trying to fill that gap. I mean, we're the Audi Club, but first and foremost, we're really a, a driver education group, and we're trying to teach people, just because we love doing this, how to be a better driver, how to react to 
ever-changing conditions. So, why are you here? Um, to try to get a little confidence about winter driving, following a 15-year bout of post-traumatic stress disorder from a, a car accident that I it was took in. you 15 years to finally. Yeah, I well, it just never occurred to me. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that you know, doing some sort of controlled driving situation might help calm me down. Yep. I, I was terrified. <laughs> this, this morning when we started out, uh, my heart was going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and um, the, the first instructor that I had, Mike, was, was really good at calming me down and I went really slowly and, and it, it helped and progressively with each time through the slalom course, I, I got feeling a little more confident. You think you'll be timid on the street still? Oh yeah, because I'm still a f scared to death of other drivers. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, they're unpredictable, and that was what I mean. That's what caused the accident. Right, exactly. You can't control that. But maybe now I would feel like, all right, well, I'll just drive off the road. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, we're here at probably one of the most famous rally schools the United States, States has oh. ever seen. Yeah. Really? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and you're surrounded by a lot of car enthusiasts who kind of live and breathe this kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But you're not a car enthusiast. No. No, no. But Did you feel welcomed? Oh, sure. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They didn't make me feel like, oh, you're not an Audi driver. <laughs> we don't want to deal with you. They, they were very, you know, what's your story? What are you here for? You right. know, what are you interested in? And... A majority of people that come to these events are car enthusiasts. That said, you will find one or two that were just in an accident and they want to get back in the saddle. They want to feel more comfortable behind the wheel. A lot of people email me, ask me, I have this car. What do I do to it to make it better, to make it faster? In reality, I think you should be spending your money on events like this. Invest in yourself. Become a better driver. A car, you know, they come and go. You, you don't.